So it sounds like already for Waymo, like machine learning is a huge part of the stack. So it's, it's a huge part of like, uh, not just, so obviously the, the first the level zero or whatever you said, which is like just the object detection of things that, you know, with know that machine learning can do, but also starting to to do prediction of behavior and so on to model the what other or the other parties in the scene, entities in the scene are going to do. So machine learning is more and more uh, playing a role in that as well. Of course. Oh, a- absolutely. I, I think we've been you know, going back to the you know, earliest days, like you know, DARPA, uh, even the DARPA Grand Challenge. Your team was leveraging you know, machine learning. I was like pre you know, ImageNet, and it was a very different type of ML. But, uh, and then I think actually well, that was before my time, but the Stanford team on during the Grand Challenge had a very interesting machine learned system that would you know, use LiDAR and camera. Uh, we've been driving in the desert and it, we had you know, built the model uh, where it would kind of extre- extend the range of free space reasoning. So we get mm-hmm. a clear signal from LiDAR and then it had a model that said, hey, like this stuff in camera kind of sort of looks like this stuff in LiDAR. And I know this stuff in, that I'm seeing in LiDAR, I'm very confident that it's free space. So let me extend that uh, uh, free space zone into the camera range that would allow the vehicle to drive faster. Right? And then we've been building on top of that and kind of staying and pushing the state of the art in ML, uh, in all kinds of different ML uh, over the years. And in fact, uh, from the earlier days, I think you know, 2010, probably the year where Google, uh, maybe 2011 probably, uh, uh, got pretty heavily involved in uh, machine learning, uh, kind of deep nuts. Uh, and at that time, it was probably the only company that was you know, very heavily investing in kind of state-of-the-art ML and self-driving cars, right? And they, 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 they go hand, you know, hand in hand. And we've been on that journey ever since. We're doing, uh, pushing a lot of these areas uh, in terms of research, you know, at Waymo, and we collaborate very heavily with the researchers in Alphabet, uh, and like all kinds of ML, you know, supervised ML, unsupervised ML. Uh, you know, we've you know, published some uh, interesting uh, research papers in the space, uh, especially recently. It's just a yeah, super super active learning uh, as well. Yeah, so super super active. Uh, or kind of, of course, there's you know, kind of the like more uh, mature stuff like, you know, convenets for, you know, object detection. But there's some really interesting, really active uh, work that's happening in um, kind of more, uh, you know, and in, in bigger models and, you know, models that uh, have more structure uh, to them, uh, you know, not just, you know, large uh, bitmaps and reason about temporal sequences. And uh, some of the interesting breakthroughs that you've, you know, we've seen in language models, right? You know, transformers, you know, you know GPT-3 you know, and friends. Uh, there's some really interesting applications of some of the core breakthroughs to those problems of, you know, behavior prediction, as well as, you know, decision-making and planning, right? You can think about it, kind of the, the behavior, uh, how, you know, the path, the trajectories, the, the how people drive, uh, they have kind of a share a lot of the fundamental structure. You know, this problem, there's, you know, sequential, you know, nature, there's a lot of structure uh, in this representation, there is a strong locality, kind of like in sentences, you know, words that follow each other, they're strongly connected, but there is also kind of larger context that doesn't have that locality. And you also see that in driving, right? What, you know, is happening in the scene as a whole has very strong implications on, uh, you know, the kind of the next step in that sequence where the, whether you're you know, predicting what other people are going to do, whether you're making your own decisions or whether in a simulator, you're building generative models of, you know, humans walking, cyclists riding, and other cars driving. Oh, that's that's all really fascinating. Like how it's fascinating to think that uh, transformer models and all the all the breakthroughs in language and NLP that might be applicable to like driving at the higher level at the behavioral level. That's kind of fascinating. 